Okay. Well, today a little different. So we don't necessarily have a topic per se, or at least a an item for a topic in regards to a new movie or anything like that. But welcome to episode number five of Deep Dive Discussions. I think it's five, right? Five. Sounds good to me. Yeah, sounds good to us. Uh, this episode. We are going to talk about our three each favorite movies of all times, and maybe throw a couple in there as like a consolation prize or something like that. Uh, honorable mentions. Yeah, honorable mentions. So, without further ado, would you like to go ahead and say your 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 numero? We'll start from three and work our way up to favorite. Sounds good. Okay, what is your third favorite movie of all time? So my list is just kind of what I was feeling at the time. I didn't really have any, <laughs> any You don't have any go-to like. movies? Well, I mean, these are definitely movies that anytime I see that they're on TV or whatever, I'm going to watch them. You're watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter at what point, if it's 10 minutes in or an hour and 10, you're like, exactly. I got to finish it. So, number three, we're going to kick it Zipper's off. Zipper's attacking. Sorry. <laughs> but number three, uh, we're going to kick it off with um, Princess Bride. What? Oh, Super I did Florida. not see that coming no, at I didn't all. didn't see that coming? Not at all. No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a sappy one, but it's super quotable, feel-good movie. Mowage. Just like to exact marriage. <laughs> you just want to snuggle up with your uh, with uh, with your significant other and uh, watch some uh, magic happen. You know, I I would hope that Erin has seen it, but I can't say that she has or hasn't. I think when you need Aaron's to get on that, dude. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know if she's seen it. I, I'm gonna have to check. I think she'd like it. I'm sure she would. Yeah. If you can get past, if you go into it knowing the time era of when it was made, it's great to watch. Yeah. If you go in, in it expecting CG and, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, rats that aren't the size as giant dogs, then you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. You know, but okay. That's, that's a good, that's a great choice. I did not, that's, that one's yeah. a left fielder for sure. Did not realize that at all. All right. All right. Let's see, my third. Now, this one's tough because I have so many that are not my top two, mm -hmm. but I have a lot that would be like my top three. Okay. Okay. So let me work out. Okay, I have my one and I have my two. Now my top, okay. my three is difficult. Here. <sighs> What? For the sake of context, none of my top three are Marvel movies. None of mine are either. Okay. All right. Yeah. We talk about Marvel enough on this channel. I figured let's yeah. let's leave it out. We I, beat that I, uh, horse I, still. Yeah. I, I, th I feel like Marvel is in its own separate category. Yeah. You know? Okay. So sure. my third may have to be Hitch. Yeah. Yeah. Like just because it's oh yeah, it's a comedy slash rom com, which is my only one of that genre in my top three. Mm -hmm. But for me, that is my like one of my most quotable movies, and it's one of my favorites. And for a time in high school, I was helping people do relationship stuff, so that kind of like was like part yeah. of it for a little bit. So that would probably be my third. That was definitely formative for both of us, I think. Yeah. Cause it was, it happened all in high school. It, it became what it came out in, I don't even know when, 20, I want to say like 2004 or something. Maybe it's probably going to pop up my screen. Of course it did. Uh, okay. So Hitch 2005, February 11th of 2005. And you better be leaving. I saw it in theaters. <laughs> yeah. so yeah that one it just kind of i don't know and will smith is one of my favorite actors so oh, yeah. for that one it's kind of easy um d 
Does any of your top movies have your favorite actor in them? Don't mention who it is. But does it have the him in it? Well, first, I got to figure out who my favorite actor is. How about this? Let's get through the movies, and then we'll mention who our favorite actors are. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. Okay. So, that is my third tie for third, but that is my third hitch okay. rom-com of 2005. What is your second? Your your first loser? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, number one loser. Uh, so, number two, uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. Really? Yep. Nice. That's, that really awoken the nerd inside me. Okay. Like, uh, it, it brought a lot of the because I had already read The Hobbit and I was going to ask uh, if you read the books. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd already read their books. It it brought to life all the stuff that I loved about it and more. So now, did it? Did you have a different interpretation going into the movie, being that you read the books? Yeah, or, or yeah, did they do really well? Like, so stuff they did really well was. Uh, characterizing the feeling of each of the characters that's true. so throughout uh the fellowship of the ring you definitely felt like the hobbits were completely clueless to what was going on uh frodo is very fragile little boy right that, that boromir was this scary dude and you just wanted gandalf to be your grandpa because he was just so cool which by the way frodo's character arc if you really take the whole thing as like a continuation really awesome in comparison to like where it comes from you know oh yeah definitely really cool by the way december 19th 2001 <sighs> jesus <Wow. laughs> yeah i no, don't we were... think i saw that in theaters no uh it's pg-13 right it's i can't be. even remember 2001 we were in like seventh grade, right? No. Because I didn't move to Indiana until I was 10. And in December of 2001, I would have been 11. So we would have been almost. Well, hold on. You we... said you moved to the, you, you said you moved there when you were 10? Yes. So this would so have been a year after I moved, year. which would have been the beginning. I would have started sixth grade that January. Sixth grade. You're in sixth grade? Okay. Uh, so she was in sixth grade. So we're the same age, right? Yeah, you're six months older. I'm six but months older. You would have been. Yeah. So, we would, so seventh grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I remember what else happened in 2001. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, in that case, I was still homeschooled. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Because I was at home when that happened. Yeah. And that was only two months beforehand. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I was in health class. But, um, yeah. So, either way. Geez. Yeah. Either way. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. They really nailed the feel of all the characters. Like, Galadriel was like on another level. Yeah. You didn't know what was going on with her at first. Very mystical quality about her. She's. Uh... We got to think, aside from Star Wars, up until yeah. this point, aside from Star Wars, there hadn't been any huge trilogies like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was long before we thought the MCU was going to be anything like Long before the MCU. Game. I mean, what other huge trilogies have their like even transformers even like yeah but the singer verse of x-men was nowhere near no back i, can... I mean x-men what x men the first x-men did come out in 2000 july 14th of 2000 but again it didn't that was it yeah because X, X2 didn't come out in 2003. Mm -hmm. But they definitely, there was, I, I'd have to dive into it, which I don't want to, but I'm, I'm curious. The budget had to be at least two to three times as 
bigger for Lord of the Rings than it was for X X Men. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. So, all right, that's oh, yeah. good. That's that. That's a good one. That's a good one, dude. I mean, but yeah, right. that that was definitely one of the first. I don't know. Would you say culturally culturally significant movies? Yeah. Since yeah, like I Star think, Wars. Yeah, I think that was a really big part of how nerds took over Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, because that's that's definitely what's happening now. I mean, we're, we're twenty six. Was it twenty twenty six movies? In the MCU? 23. 23. Yeah. 23 movies in the MCU, more to come. But we've had the Fantastic Four twice now. Yeah. And, there's... and it hasn't gotten any better. Yeah, it hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> okay, actually, the budget and box office opening are right in front of me already. Oh, yeah? So budget for X-Men, $75 million. Box office, just under $300 million. Okay. Okay. Which this is nuts. Budget for Lord of the Rings, ninety three million. Okay. So was that eighteen more million? Yeah. Which obviously I would love to have eighteen million, but it's not that <laughs> much in regards to a movie. Yeah. Box office, eight hundred and seventy one million. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's pretty good. Like uh, clearly, yeah. it's a, a huge difference. Like yeah. they're really not in the same realm. Other than within, you know, a year of each other. That's literally the only difference. Or the, that's the only somewhat similar similarities between them. So, okay, that's that's awesome. That's a good, that's a, that's a good number two. Number two for me, Boonock Saints. Oh, okay. It's backwards, yeah. so it is hard to tell. I'll figure that out next time. But Boondock Saints is my number two. Just because it's one of those movies that, like, once I saw it, I was like, all right, I'm good. Because it has, I think, a little bit of everything for everyone. There's moments where you're going to laugh. There's moments where you're going to be like, this movie is so dope. There's religious moments. Oh, yeah. There's rival gangs. There's shootouts. There's freaking uh, fights. There's stunts. There's mm-hmm. a lot of comedy, and surprisingly so. Because they, they, mess, yeah. they mess up so much in this movie, and it just works out for them. Mm-hmm. So, Boondock Saints probably one of my favorite movies it's on this rack somewhere but mm-hmm. yeah definitely definitely one of my favorites and i think that's which by the way would you like to guess when it came out just throw a number mm, i guess 99 99 nice january 22nd 1999 which there i can go. say i definitely had not seen it for many mm. years after <laughs> yeah but I just yeah. thought it was really, really cool, especially at the very beginning where they're in like the jail cell and the mm-hmm. water drips or whatever, and they both rise out of their se- you know, their their beds or whatever. I was like, okay, this is neat. There's there's more than just gangs messing around, you know. So mm-hmm. it was just really, really, really cool to see. By far one of my favorite movies. Some of the f- funniest moments, I would say, especially yeah. for that time period, it was really, really good. What was your favorite moment from that one? Probably when they are in the duct. And they're like, they're like, he brought the rope and he's like, bro, we have to use the rope. I see it in all the movies. He's like, we'll climb in the ductwork and then we'll just rappel down and then we'll kill them all. Mm. And instead of that happening, um, Norman Reedus has the rope around him. They both fall through the ceiling. The rope gets caught up into the ductwork and they're hanging there and they just spin around while they're hanging there and they kill everybody. And it was all by accident. (laughs) <laughs> and that's my favorite part of the movie. Just it was literally just an accident. They wanted it to be awesome, and then at the end they're like, "Oh my god, that worked!" Which is great. There's also a nice a, mix of action and comedy there. Yeah, and there's also a really, really, really funny moment that it, if you don't pay attention, you're not going to see it. At one scene, they are in their apartment or whatever it is, and they're like cleaning guns or something like that. And um, there's a round table, and the cat is laying on the table. And one of the guys hits the table and it makes the shotgun go off, blows up the cat. Okay. To like, to the point where like the majority of the cat is on the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next scene, there's a piece of paper covering that part of the wall. Yeah. (laughs) It's just, it's like, okay, I get it. (laughs) Like they literally just took a piece of paper and 
it stuck mm-hmm. it onto the wall to kind of cover it up. So yeah, there's a really, really funny parts if you pay attention to it. Plus, it's really awesome when they're like speaking mm-hmm. three different languages when they don't want anybody to know. Mm-hmm. And they're just like going back and forth with like Italian and like all this different stuff. So it's really, really cool. One of my favorite movies. But yeah. Do you have you? I'm sure you've seen it, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Multiple times. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just one of those. <laughs> okay. So I got, there's a freaking lint flying around. Sorry. What is your top favorite movie of all time? Should I do like a drum roll or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i the one that i watched probably the most um that i've i've uh, come back to a bunch of times since i was since i was young bit of, bit of a macho movie i'll, I'll admit but okay. gladiator uh, see okay. that's in one of my honorable mentions Honorable mentions, Gladiator has to be up there. Yeah. That's also in this rack right here. All my favorite movies mm-hmm. are like right here. So as you can see, I have a lot of them. There's mm-hmm. there's Fight Club, Deadpool 2. I think that's Buried with Ryan Reynolds. There's a, It's a lot of Ryan Reynolds films. Yeah. <laughs> so Gladiator, dude, that's awesome. Marcus Zerilius Maximus, right? Maximus Decimus Meridius. That's it. Okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Father to a murdered wife, or father to a murdered son, to hus- husband to a murdered yeah, wife, or something like that. Life. Yeah. In this life or the next, I will have my. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's one of the first movies that I saw with Walking Phoenix, and I was like, I hate you. Yeah. Like, I hate you, he Walking Phoenix. So good. So good. Yeah. He was like a bit of a creep, and he was just. Yeah. He hit all of the bad guy notes, and, you know. Uh, patricide he's, he's, he's freaking yeah, beating and, up his and uh mm-hmm. russell crow by far like that was like the height of russell crow oh yeah you're just like all right you walked out of that movie going i got my money's worth um yeah he's uh yeah that was peak russell crow it uh yeah he's I'm always a sucker for angsty movies. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that was definitely a part of it, but it had it was just over the top, pulled on the heartstrings. But uh, and the ending always gets me. God, so what if you lived? Had, what if they were like, uh, "God, eight or two coming out." Yeah. Oh, been but, awesome. Uh, God, it's a good movie. Yeah, it, it would. It definitely would not have had the same gravity if if he had made it through, but. Uh, no, no, no. I, that type of movie, really them to. being a gladiator, I don't think mm-hmm. you're supposed to make it through. <laughs> Especially him. Like, he had nothing to live for. Yeah. Like, he was just like, my goal is to just kill you. I would prefer to have your whole country hate you as well. But if I can just <laughs> kill you, I'm good. And then by the end, he had the whole country loving him. A whole uproar happened, and he was, you know, he got his vengeance. Um. Mm-hmm. Great choice. Awesome choice. Which, by the way, another saga that I forgot to mention in regards to talking about sagas, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter was probably one of the other huge, culturally, uh, you know, big, what's that? Significant, yeah. Yeah. Movies that came out during during our younger years, sadly. Yeah. So, but yes. I think I was 11 when the first Harry Potter book came out. That sounds about right. Let's look it up, shall we? Harry Potter 2001. Yep. Yeah. I think, right? Harry mm-hmm. Potter release date. Apparently, you have to type in movie release date or it freaks out. Yeah, November of 2001. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. That means that. Lord of the Rings 1 and Harry Potter 1 literally came out within a month of each other. Yeah. That's crazy. Which, by the way, doesn't say how much the budget was, but box office $975 million. Yeah. And Lord of the Rings, $875. So literally $100 million difference. Yeah. Both of those hit me smack dab in the middle of my childhood. Yeah, absolutely. 
I would say that one. And plus, I mean, freaking Harry Potter went until what? 2000. When was the last Harry Potter? 2014? I don't remember. Oh, definitely not that. 2011. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was eight years ago. Yeah, that would be about right. That was when Aaron and I were like a year. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Jesus. Yeah. My God. Okay, yeah. So I was 21. It still seems way too long ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so awesome. Gladiator. So dope. Good mm -hmm. choice. Good choice. My all-time favorite movie by far. Thank you. Thank you. Inception really yes yes november of 2010 okay i'm going pretty with the sure mind bender on that one. what's that going with the brain bender on that one i am dude because i july 13th of 2010 i was barely off july, 2010 I was 20 years old going to see inception and i believe if i can remember right believe i saw it in theaters like three times wow awesome movie one of my favorites to this day, I literally do nothing but give it to, to my coworkers that have not seen it to go watch. Like, mm. I gave it to one coworker about a month ago. They just gave it to me three days ago, and I already have it at another coworker who hadn't seen it. Yeah. Literally, I'm like, watch it. Come in tomorrow. We'll have a great discussion. Because it's just mm. one of those movies where, like, every single time you watch it, you're like, I didn't notice that. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice that. And I love walking away from movies and going, I have to see it again in order to truly understand what happened. Yeah. Because if you can walk away from a movie, not understand what happened, and still go, that was a great movie, like, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And ever since Inception, I've been looking for a movie to do that. And there's been, like, here and there, there's, you know, good movies and blah, 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 blah. But ever since then, I'm still looking for a movie that, like, the opening sequence where he's, like, he realizes the dream realizes he's invading and then the water starts coming in and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> like, mm, good movie. Yeah. Great, great movie. Uh, not quite the same uh, impact as, uh, uh, the same cultural impact as, as the other movies, but not uh, at all. But it's one that definitely sticks with people. Uh, Which by the way, 830 million. Yeah. Solid release. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really glad we didn't have a sequel to that. Because Absolutely. I think it would have lost its... Very, yeah. Very self-contained narrative. Uh, Nolan clearly said everything he wanted to say with it. Exactly. Exactly. And that... Like, let's face it. That definitely had probably something to do with... Um, it doing so well in the box office was that Christopher Nolan at this time, I mean, you got to think Batman Begins came out in 2005. Yeah. You know, and then you got what Batman, what was the last one? Uh, Dark Knight Rises. Yes. Dark Knight Rises came out in 2012. So it was in between the best Batman with, you know, Heath Ledger and all that. Then Inception comes out and then Dark Knight Rises comes out. You know, so it was like mm. in that, that last little trilogy of Nolan movies that really probably just pieced itself together because Dark Knight Rises, which I would say was the, not the best one, but it definitely wasn't, I, I wouldn't even consider any of those the worst ones, but it wasn't the, you yeah. know, it was number two out of the three for me. It still did $1 billion. Yeah. Like pretty awesome. Um, Dark. What was the one with Heath Ledger? I am drawing a blank. Dark Knight. Just right? Just Dark Knight? I was going to take Dark Knight. So that one. Uh -huh. Not Arkham Knight. Just Dark Knight. Why is it not coming up? Oh, because I'm. An, it's because I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> 2008. And that one did the almost the exact same money-wise. 
zero zero five billion dollars. Mm-hmm. So, which was a great movie. So yeah, so just in that perfect era, I mean, you ha- he had literally a Nolan movie that made a billion dollars. Then Inception came out two years later, that made almost a billion. And then you had The Dark Knight Rises, which came out and made a billion. So that whole yeah. trifecta, I think, helped to that. But by far my favorite movie. Plus the cast is like killer. Oh yeah. Because you got Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Tom Hardy, Michael Caine, Ellen, Ellen Page. Page. Like, it's a great yeah. cast. And that's just the ones I can remember, let alone the ones that were in there somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's definitely uh, Nolan's magnum. That's the, that's the masterpiece. That, that's the one I think he'll be, he'll be remembered the most for. Yeah, I would say that and um, Dark Knight. Sure. You know, just because his, his, the way he, and I kind of, the way he, the direction he took on he on the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, I think was just like a freaking artist with a paintbrush. Yeah. It, you know. It elevated it from just a superhero movie to being like a crime drama. Yeah, exactly. And essentially that's all Batman truly is, is he's a detective. Yeah, you know, and and it's it's cool to get that feel back, mm-hmm. and I think he did it correctly. You know, and that's why it did a billion dollars back in two thousand freaking ten or eight. So awesome, awesome. So that is our top six favorite movies of all times. A little bit of a sprinkle on some other movies. Is there any honorable mentions though that you would like to throw out of uh, from right or left field? I think I know one. Yeah, if you don't if you don't know one, <laughs> then. Clearly, you've been replaced with a skin changer. I am a scroll. Um, So, honorable mention from both of our... Do we want to do a 3-2-1? A a 3-2-1? I don't know how it's going to go because I'm sure there's some sort of latency lag. But we're going to find out. Ready? Three, two, one. Rush Hour 2. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, Rush Hour 2, by far one of my favorite comedies of all time. Yeah, that and probably the original Hangover. Like I would say, Rush Hour Two original Hangover is like right there. Okay. Rush Hour Two by far probably my most quotable movie, and I know yours as well, <laughs> of my history of life. Yeah. Like that was that was like one of the ingredients to the cement in our relationship growing up. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which I'm kind of bummed out that they made a third one because yeah. it was was it i feel like they were just trying to like oh remnants like please come back to us like we're trying to you yeah. know it also didn't help that there was eh, it was a six year difference it came out in 2001 uh yeah. rush hour three came out in 2007 so a six mm-hmm. year difference which i thought it would be a little bit more i mean as far as three equals go yeah i think it was all right i mean yeah it, it didn't have the magic of the first one it was, it was yeah. still a good buddy cop movie but it wasn't quite the could you aside from quoting quotes from rush hour 2 that reappeared in rush hour 3 could you quote anything from rush hour 3 that was just to that movie no not at all it was not nowhere all. near as memorable we could almost quote the whole movie Rush Hour 2 from front and start to finish. I would probably have to watch yeah, it once to remember, but I could probably do it eventually. Oh, yeah. Like, at one point, we definitely could. Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely an honorable, honorable, high honorable mention. <laughs> uh, so that one was both of us. Do you have any anyone else you would like to throw in there as well? Or do you have anything else to add to the Rush Hour 2 section of our topics? Other than Think- Gefilka Fish. I felt yeah. the fish. <laughs> I that whole you ain't gonna be rush out. Three. I I have adapted that to so many movies since. Oh no! Like, it's oh man, so quotable. It's it's so spicy. Ah, oh, so good. I mean, just that, or or like, uh, I didn't say it was a bomb. I said she was the bomb. She's the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
There's just something magical about Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan yeah, going together. Yeah, because you have Chris Tucker, who speaks so fast that even if your like original language is English, you're still like, what? So yeah. like to have Jackie Chan, who at this point is like he knows English, but his character is yeah. still learning it. Yeah, it was great. So so good. I mean, I still use the like the saying, "Use them tiger teeth." I still use that to this day. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's so good, dude. Uh -huh. So good. Uh, any other movies? I have a couple movies, but I'll let you. Okay. I'll let you throw some. If you have any off the top of your noggin. Uh, Forrest Gump always hits me right in the feels. That's a good one. I didn't even think about really that hard. one. That was a good classic. Yeah. I don't think it's the, quite the same kind of thing where I could just start and stop watching it at any point in the movie and have a good time. Yeah. But uh, I would like say the other movies on our list. As from our list, as a personal connection, I wouldn't say it's not there. Yeah. But if you're looking at the lineage of movies, it would probably mm -hmm. have to be on that list. Yeah. You know, plus Absolutely. Tom Hanks, I don't care who you are. He's got to be in your top 20 favorite actors. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Like the guy's done some crap. Mm -hmm. um, personal, one of my personal favorites. Again, a movie that I can start in any section and watch. 10 minutes left. An hour and 10 minutes left. Troy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just because it's one of those movies where you're just like, this is so B.A. <laughs> like, uh, it's so awesome. I mean, is there no one else kind of, you know, like, yeah. oh, you're like, yeah, forget it. Yeah, go stop it. Like, ah, uh, like I'm not a huge. You all the right spots for an action movie. Yeah. And the only discrepancy that I have is that I'm not a huge Eric Bana fan. And this goes back to The Incredible Hulk. I'm not a huge Eric Bana fan. And for mm. him to be Hector pretty sure yeah yeah he's heck. he he just has i feel like one linear mode of acting facially mm. that it's just like i'm like bro come on like get into it a little bit more but straight from the opening scene when he just jumps on the guy and whoosh, right yeah. to the dude's like freaking upper torso i was like okay yeah. well that was easy if if i can make an appeal to your uh my just like eric banna, eric banna yes I, watching black hawk down i have seen black hawk down and that was going to be one of my other honorable mentions because yeah, black I'm hawk down enemy. one of my favorites also behind enemy lines mm -hmm. one of my other favorites mm -hmm. and while okay. we're on the topic of tom hanks saving private ryan you know that was one i didn't like all that much i liked it i mean just because it had a lot the cast was phenomenal yeah, cast was great. Uh, the concentration camp scene always hits me like a train. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The ending that I, I I didn't really get into. Yeah, which if you haven't seen, um, have you seen Behind Enemy Lines? Uh, which one was that? That's the one with Owen Wilson. Oh no, I haven't. Behind I'll check that one out. Enemy Lines. Is in fact the one with Owen Wilson. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm not being stupid. Okay, that is the one with Owen Wilson. That is correct, dude. Great scene. Great. The ending mm -hmm. scene, beautiful. Gotta watch it. Please go see it. It's one of okay. those where like you're gonna walk away and be like, that was pretty freaking realistic. Okay, that was realistic. Um. All right. Any other last minute, up, uh, last uh, honorable mentions that you just got to throw in there? I would like to give a shout out to uh, <laughs> like they're going to see this. Uh, Which one? Yeah, <laughs> it's called Primer. Uh, P R I N E R. Time travel movie. What? You want to talk about brain benders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched this movie like three times before. Primer, two thousand four. Is an independent film, so uh, okay. not a lot of people have seen it. So, the description. Four friends slash fledglings, entrepreneurs, knowing that there's something bigger and more innovative than the different air-checking devices they've built, wrestle over their new invention. 
and I'm guessing it's some sort of cheapo depo time travel thing. Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a huge budget movie, but it'll uh, it'll make you think and it'll make you feel like not a huge budget to the point where I don't know any of the actors. Well, yeah. Like, like that's I, where a lot of money goes. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know anybody. I'm scrolling down. Yeah, yeah. I'm, like I said, it's an independent film. Cool. I'm gonna have go to check that out. See it if you want. If you want to bust your brain. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. And okay, let me just do this real fast. Um. Any. Any new age movies like not. In our timeline, circa 2010 or previous, any newer movies that you're just like, this was a great movie? I think you've got one in mind, so I'll... I'll do I? I, I, I don't know, know if I do. Oh, <laughs> I'll say okay. you would fly with it. <laughs> uh, um, um, I don't know. <sighs> there's got to be. I'm sure there's got to there's be. Uh, there's probably uh, one obvious one, and I'm just like completely missing it, or we both are. See, the, here's the thing, though. The 2000, the past 15 years have, or 10 years have been so full of Marvel movies that it's hard to not make one of them my favorite. Yeah. Like that's the one that I've seen recently. I don't even know how how recently it's come out. Uh, that that really got me is uh, Coco. The Pixar movie. Really? Mm-hmm. I heard that one. I haven't seen it. Yeah. But Go see. my little sister, Carmen, if you mm-hmm. don't know, um, she loves that movie. Loves it. So, yeah. yeah I would have it's, to... It'll hit you. The animation looks great. Yeah. It'll hit you in all the feels. It's it's actually pretty cool. Really? But, yeah. Yeah. it's. I mean, it's not quite uh, quite the same... There, there's not, not any like huge battle scenes like it's not going to be like end game but uh, just because no one's going to know what this is except for maybe you and i and the one person who watches this that actually knows comic books this is going to be backwards so i apologize hmm. uh yeah by far my favorite animated batman movie which i know what you guys are thinking adam may not be but whoever's watching this may be Oh, animated, how good can it be? Look, there's cursing in this. There's not nudity, but there's cursing, okay? Which is different from an animated show about Batman, but it's awesome. (laughs) Jensen Ackles is in it, who plays Dean, for those of you who don't know, off Supernatural. So suck it. Um, So yeah, that's one of my favorites of all time. But yeah, that's, that's, is that going to do it? Are we done? Is there anything I mean, else? Any more time? Uh, we we probably roll this into a, an all day episode, but uh, you know, I'm sure. Look, I've got Pulp Fiction in my background. Yeah. Freaking, of course, duh, that's a given. I've got next. By the way, next episode, tune in. We're going to do our favorite TV shows of all time. I haven't told yeah. you this, so if you want to start thinking now, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> but next episode's going to be favorite TV shows. We may try and get some more people in here. Because the more people we have, the more broader our span of TV shows will be. Because <laughs> everyone's TV show who watches it is going to be Game of Thrones. Mm. Because that's the current thing that's happening now. It has the best story arc from what I've seen. So we're going to leave that out of it. I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones. I don't believe you do. Do you? Me? Yeah. I've seen everything up to the new season. Okay. So anybody who watches Game of Thrones is going to be like, this is going to be in your top five yeah because it's such a great story arc for all the characters but we're going to try and leave a list that doesn't have that in there so tune in for the next episode to check out our favorite tv shows excluding game of thrones because that's going to be a default (laughs) but yeah any final final words you can say no (laughs) (laughs) okay well that being said guys thank you all for watching this has been our favorite movies of all time Ones, you know, that really just hits you in the heart that uh, you can turn on at any second and be like, I got to watch it. Mm. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been myself. My name is Freddie. 
This is my YouTube mm. channel. This is my best friend, Adam, aka. What? what uh, do you want to call me? Palamo. Oh, mysterious and dark. Reach, reach back to seventh grade. Yes, <laughs> my name was Raul. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys on the next episode. Please leave a like if you liked it. If you didn't, just refresh it and watch it again just to be nice to me. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this because we will be trying to upload a little bit more frequently. We just got to come up with more topics. So if you see some something you like or something you want to hear some people talk about that may uh, they might like hear in their voices, leave something down in the comments. Maybe we'll throw that into our next video. This has been another episode of Deep Dive Discussions. Look like at Snow White eating rotten apples Dirty bass that be coming at you Roller coasters like a supernova Around the ring master, this my tabernacle See you screaming, I'm like, what for? Oh, you pop, yeah, I got popcorn I